what's going on within City Hall today. 12,488, that was the number of residents who voted for Maggie Houlihan in 2008. When she won the election with the most votes of any of the candidates. Why did so many residents vote for her? Because they recognized the person who not only talked the talk, but also walked the walk. And in Maggie's case, the walk was one of fiscal conservancy, appropriate development, quality of life, environmental stewardship, a healthy arts and cultural community, a thriving business climate, and of course, respect for animals. How many of you does that resonate with? She wanted an Encinitas of the people, by the people, and for the people. That vision, her accomplishments, and the balance she brought to this council are now in imminent jeopardy. Examples of her positions included standing against promoting Phil Cotton from his position as Director of Public Works directly to City Manager, as he was an unproven entity, and she protested that the recruiting effort never reached beyond Encinitas. Mr. Cotton was the first hand-picked member to join the council's inner circle. She was against the substantial raise he received after only a short time in the position, and she was against the extra months he worked so he could pad his pension. The self-proclaimed fiscally conservative council majority, on the other hand, was for all of this. She stood against development that did not fit well within our communities and she stood for developers paying their fair share of development fees instead of having the Encinitas taxpayers fill the gap. The self-proclaimed fiscally conservative council majority consistently votes on the side of developers and against fee increases for them. She fought to have open space appraised for possible purchase by the city for the benefit of all residents. The council majority turned the opportunity down flat. When she personally got involved and created business boosting events, such as the Garden Tour and the Pet Health Expo, the self-proclaimed pro-business council majority pulled all funding from the Garden Tour, so they had to go it alone. And look what it is today. That team was not about to be stopped by petty politics. These are things that you as our residents know about. What you don't know about are all the things Maggie asked to have added to the council agendas that were simply turned down by city managers under the direction of the council majority. Make sure you understand that. There were items of importance to this community that the council majority would not even allow on the agenda to be discussed in public. That has now led to this majority having to acquiesce under pressure from Maggie and Teresa Barth and the public to a requirement that instead of three council members needing to sponsor an agenda item, a minimum of two are now required. A minimum of two. Which brings us to where we are today. Mr. Muir has been handpicked by the voting majority to add to their strength on the dais. On the important issues, the slant will now be four to one. Are you starting to get it? Remember, it takes two council members to get an issue on the agenda. Who else in our city's history has spent years actively and openly getting his bosses elected, who as payback have not only enhanced his career, but are now providing an unencumbered path for him to join them in the political arena? Make no mistake, despite the council majority applauding themselves for selecting the best applicant for the job, and any reasonable person, any reasonable person would categorize this selection as questionable at best and damn right cronyism at worst. Shame on you, stop! Shame on you, stop! He's shameless! He's shameless! How can you sleep at night? Gently, gently. We need another Maggie Houlihan. Yeah. 
Not a carbon copy of Jerome Stocks or James Bond. And there were applicants for her seat that subscribed to her vision for the city. With the selection of Mr. Muir, we have not only severely diminished the perspective of 12,488 of our residents, but the majority on this council are ushering in a pro-development, non-environmental, why should I listen to the residents era that will only come to an end if all of us who are concerned about this culture become engaged now and work to end it. Thank you.